welcome my class 10 students. This is a sample paper of chemistry for class 10 ICAC board. It's one of the prelim examination papers. It consists of as usual section 1 which is a 40 marks and section 2 will be again of 40 marks. You have to attempt four questions from section 2. Section 1 all the questions are compulsory. So let us see how we handle this question paper. Question 1. Choose the correct option for the options given in the bracket. A nitrate which forms white precipitate with ammonium hydroxide. If it is a white precipitate, then it could be gelatinous white for zinc and lead will be chalky white. But it should be soluble in excess. Now remember zinc is the one which will be soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide because it forms tetraamine uh, zinc compound. So this is the correct one. The covalent compound that does not have a lone pair. Now NH3 has a lone pair, H2O has two but CH4 does not have any because it is C with four single bonds so CH4 is the answer. The metal which is found in the second period which has atomic number. Now second period means it is going to have two shells. This is 2 comma 2 and this is 281 and this is 2881. So the metal which is found in the second period will be with two shells that is this one. So it is 4. Okay. So this is the correct answer. If the combining atoms of the compounds have nearly similar electronegativities then the bond between them will be now similar electronegativities which means there will be no charge separation. If there is no charge separation then there will be no polarity. So it will be non-polar covalent. Example of basic salt. Now basic salt is this is the keyword here. Basic means it should have OH and another electronegative. So this is OH with another electronegative. So it becomes basic copper chloride. So this is the correct one. Section 1B. Identify the gas that evolves in the following reactions. A reddish brown gas formed when lead nitrate undergoes thermal decomposition. Nitrate will give out NO2 gas. So it will be nitrogen dioxide. I am just writing NO2 for saving time. The gas produced at the anode when acidified water that is dilute sulfuric acid undergoes electrolysis. Now acidified water will have H1 plus and OH1 minus dissociation and sulfuric acid will be H1 plus and SO4 2 minus. So at the anode OH and SO4 both will migrate but OH will get discharged so the gas produced will be it will be oxygen. So I am just writing O2 you have to write the full word oxygen. When ethane undergoes complete combustion, on complete combustion ethane will give carbon dioxide and of course steam but they want a gas so we will not consider steam. It's actually CO2 plus H2O so that is carbon dioxide and steam. Gas produced when sodium hydrogen carbonate reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid. So hydrogen carbonate with hydrochloric acid will have this H2CO3 formed and that will liberate carbon dioxide. I'm just writing CO2. You have to write carbon dioxide. The gas formed when an alkali reacts with ammonium sulfate. Now alkali is going to be something and hydroxide. So ammonium will react with that hydroxide and it will give ammonium hydroxide which means the gas will be ammonia. I'm writing NH3. You have to write ammonia okay now let us come to c part <clears throat> let us solve this first write the appropriate observation in the following cases ammonia is passed over heated copper oxide now so we write black copper oxide is reduced to pinkish brown copper metal let us come to the second one dilute sulfuric acid is added to barium nitrate so barium will combine with the sulfate radical over here and it will form barium sulfate. So barium sulfate is going to be white precipitate. So let's write just that. It is white precipitate of barium sulfate is formed which is insoluble in all mineral acids. Let us look at the third subpart. 
dry HCl gas is passed over dry blue litmus paper. Now here, dry blue litmus paper is not going to affect dry HCl gas. So we write the third one, blue litmus remains blue, there will be no change. If it was moist blue litmus paper, then that moist blue litmus would have turned red because dry HCl is neutral. Let us look at the fourth one. When dilute nitric acid oxidizes copper, so we write pinkish brown copper metal dissolves in dilute nitric acid forming blue solution of copper nitrate. Now remember the gas given out is NO which is nitric oxide which is colorless. So there will be no other observation. Let us look at the last one. When Kong sulfuric acid is added to sugar crystals, now this everybody knows Kong sulfuric acid is going to leave a black spongy mass of carbon. So that will be the observation. I'm not going to write this. Let us go to the next question. Your question 1D says state your observations. Now the earlier it said state appropriate observation and here it's asking you to write observations which means all the observations that you can possibly see you have to write. So look at the first one. Dilute hydrochloric acid is added to copper 2 sulfide. Sulfide reacting with acid will give us H2S gas. So we, so we will write H2S gas. The observation for that colorless hydrogen sulfide gas is liberated which smells of rotten eggs. Alright and the second observation will be this copper sulfide is going to be black in color. So black copper sulfide is going to turn into blue solution of copper chloride because copper will take this Cl, it will become copper chloride. Let us look at our second question. Excess of sodium hydroxide solution is added to ferrous sulfate solution. Now ferrous sulfate will become ferrous hydroxide. The observations will be dirty green precipitate of iron hydroxide is formed which is insoluble in excess of NaOH solution and also remember FeSO4 that is ferrous sulfate is green in color it is pale green so pale green FeSO4 solution turns colorless. Let's look at the third one few drops of sulfuric acid is added slowly to sodium hydrogen sulfide. Now sodium hydrogen sulfide so we have HSO3 radical there that will with the acid it will produce sulfur dioxide gas and we have written effervescence of colorless SO2 gas is seen which turns lime water milky and acidified K2Cr2O7 solution from orange to clear green. Look at your fourth question. Fourth subpart is acetylene is passed through solution of bromine in carbon tetrachloride. Now here I'll just discuss this orally with you. Reddish brown color of bromine in inner solvent CCL4 will be discharged because acetylene is unsaturated. Fifth subpart, few drops of oil of vitriol is added to blue vitriol. Now oil of vitriol is conch H2SO4 and blue vitriol is CuSO4 dot 5H2O. So this concentrated H2SO4 is going to remove this water of crystallization. So what will be our observation? We will just write blue hydrated copper sulfate crystals will turn into amorphous white anhydrous copper sulfate. Okay, let us come to E part. Now E part is organic chemistry. Now we have to write the IUPAC names. So IUPAC name for this, you look at the straight chain. It's got three carbons, so it is a prop. And this OH will give you the hydroxyl group, which is all. So it is going to be propanol. But the second carbon has got OH, so it becomes 2-propanol or it will be propane-2-ol. The second subpart. This way, if you take the longest chain, it's three carbons. This way also it is three carbons. So you see it is prop, but it has this CH3 group and CH3 group. So it's a methyl group for the second carbon, two methyl groups. So it will be 2, 2, dimethyl propane. 
let us look at the third one here you will see can you see this this is your aldehyde group two carbon so it is eth so this will be a th nal let us look at the fourth sub part we have one two three four five five carbons in the straight chain with the bromine here okay so you are going to have bromine and this is chlorine so this will be your first carbon this will be a second carbon this will be a third fourth and fifth so it is going to be one bromo two chloro four methyl okay so it will be one bromo two for the second carbon cl chloro four methyl pentane now why did i not number from here because ch3 is not a functional group we start from functional group numbering always from functional group and that too we will start with the alphabetical order we come to the fifth sub part now here you can see this can you see the straight chain like this you can take either this way or this way and you have to start the numbering from the functional group that is the bond now bond is closest from here so this will be 1 2 3 4 and this will be 5 so it will be your 2 ion and it will be 4 methyl so i will write 4 methyl and there are 1 2 3 4 5 carbon so it is a pent so it will be pent and the second carbon has got triple bond so pent Two let us look at the next question this is our empirical formula uh, question uh, compound x consists of 4.8 percent of carbon 95.2 percent bromine by mass determine the empirical formula of this compound working correct to one decimal place vapor density is 252 we have to find the molecular formula name it and also find the kind of chemical reaction by which it can be prepared from ethane so we have made the columns element percentage atomic weight relative number of atoms then simple ratio now these two columns have to be big and broad columns these ones have to be narrow columns as you already know carbon percentage atomic weight relative number of atoms will be percentage divided by atomic weight that will give us 0.4 and then bromine percentage atomic weight and percentage upon atomic weight is 1.2 now you will see that 80 will go once in 95 and remain 15 now when we take this two down it is going to be very close to 160 which is 80 into 2 so i'm not going to do 80 once 80 and whatever remainder it will go nine times in that remainder i'm just going to approximate over here and that will be your 1.2 they have said till one place of decimal so now both of these will be divided by 0.4 so 0.4 upon 0.4 which is equal to 1 and 1.2 upon 0.4 is equal to 3 so your empirical formula is c 1 and b are 3 and that is our answer 1 the second part asks us to find the molecular formula so vapor density is 252 so we will first find empirical formula weight c is 12 and b are 3 is 3 into 80 the atomic weight of bromine is 80 so that will give us 12 plus 240 that is 252 molecular weight is related to vapor density with this formula as 2 into vapor density so n will be equal to molecular weight upon empirical formula weight molecular weight is 2 into vapor density which is 252 upon 252 which gets cancelled and you get n equal to 2 molecular formula is n times empirical formula so that is 2 into c br3 that is c2 br6 so can you see this is our answer to and this is your derivative of ethane C2H6 is ethane and all the hydrogens have been substituted with bromine. So now we are going to have the third part which asks us to find what is the name of this X. So it's going to be 6 bromine so hexa bromo 
ethane because of two carbons and single bond it will be ethane all right and how is this prepared from ethane now ethane was c2h6 and all h's were substituted by br so x is prepared by substitution method from ethane and that is our answer 3 question 1g is give reasons for the following number 1 the cation is smaller than the parent neutral atom second one is dry hydrogen chloride gas does not affect a dry strip of blue litmus paper but it turns red in presence of a drop of water third one is electron affinity of noble gas elements is zero then fourth one ionic compounds have high melting and boiling point number five is sulfurous acid forms two types of salts on action with an alkali so let us see how we write the answers the first answer Cation is smaller than the parent neutral atom. A cation is formed when the neutral atom of a metal loses its valence electron. Hence, a cation has one electron shell less than the parent atom. So, the size of the ion is going to be less than the atom. Also, the cation has less number of electrons than the parent atom. As the number of protons in the nucleus is more than the number of electrons in the cation the protons exert a greater pull on the electrons resulting in the atomic size being smaller than the parent neutral atom let us look at our second answer dry hydrogen chloride gas does not affect a dry strip of blue litmus paper but it turns red in presence of a drop of water and the answer is dry hydrogen chloride gas is neutral to litmus but in the presence of a drop of water it becomes hydrochloric acid and due to the presence of H3O1 plus ion that is hydronium ions that are formed it exhibits acidic nature and therefore turns blue litmus red. Let's look at the third subpart. The electron affinity of noble gases is zero. Now noble gases have a complete duplet or octet and so they have a stable electronic configuration. So they do not need to gain, lose or share the electrons and so they are not going to accept any electrons so there will be no electron affinity and therefore the Ea that is electron affinity is zero. Let us look at the fourth subpart. Ionic compounds have high melting and boiling point. Now ionic compounds have a cation and an anion. They are held together by a strong electrostatic force of attraction. Sorry the ink got changed because this ink finished. Which requires greater energy to overcome during the change of state. Thus more energy is required to separate the ions in the liquid or gaseous state and so the melting and boiling points are high for the ionic compounds. Let us come to the fifth and the last subpart of this question. Sulfurous acid forms two types of salts on reaction with an alkali. So sulfurous acid H2SO3 has two hydrogen atoms per molecule can you see this yeah in aqueous solution so this can be partially or completely replaced so if it's partially replaced or completely replaced then we get two types of salt by the cation of the alkali forming the acid salt if it is partially replaced and completely when it is replaced then you get a normal salt and thus it will form two types of salt. So next part which is H. Identify the anions present in each of the following compounds. Compound X on reacting with barium chloride gives a white precipitate which is insoluble in dilute hydrochloric acid or nitric acid which means that barium has formed BaSO4. So the anion in X is going to be 
sulfate which is SO4 2 minus right into bracket even the name sulfate. Compound Z which on heating with dilute sulfuric acid liberates a gas which turns lime water milky but it has no effect on acidified potassium dichromate solution which means this gas over here this is carbon dioxide gas and therefore the anion is going to be carbonate which is into bracket you will spell it out now after h comes this is i draw electron dot diagram to show the formation of ammonium ion this you will find in any textbook just learn this by heart you have to know this by heart it's an important question we now come to section 2 now section 2 is 40 marks and here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 questions. So out of 6 questions you have to attempt any 4. So can you see this? Any 4 questions that you have to attempt. So let us see how we solve this question 2. Write a balanced chemical equation with conditions required for the preparation of the following given compounds. Ethane from ethine and ammonia from nitrogen. So your 2A is first part, ethane is to be prepared from ethine. Okay, so you have C triple bond C with these H's, that is your ethine, we add hydrogen and the condition is nickel at 300 degrees C and that will give us ethene, triple bond becomes double bond and then with additional hydrogen with the same condition nickel and 300 that will make this double bond becoming single bond this is your ch3 single bond ch3 and that's your ethane second part is ammonia from nitrogen so your n2 plus 3h2 know all the conditions this is your temperature 450 to 500 degrees c the pressure is 200 to 900 atmosphere that gives us 2 nh3 here and plus it's an exothermic reaction, so 22,400 calories of heat is given out and the catalyst being finely divided iron and promoter is molybdenum. Now let us look at 2B. Draw the branch structural formula for the following organic compounds, 3-hexene, formaldehyde and carboxylic acid with the molecular formula C5H10O2. Let us see our solution. So your 3 hexene, hex means there are 6 carbons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And for the third carbon, we will have ene means double bond. So we have first carbon, second carbon, third carbon. So the third carbon will have the double bond that will make it hexene with a double bond attached to the third carbon. Then we have formaldehyde. Now formaldehyde is HCHO. So we'll write first C and we will show C single bond H, C single bond H and the remaining two valencies will be for oxygen and that is our branch structure for formaldehyde. Now the third one is carboxylic acid with molecular formula. So the molecular formula is C5, H, 10 and O2. So if it is C5, we will show 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons. And these two oxygens will be for carboxylic acid, so COOH. So I will start from your C with double bond O and single bond OH. So this is this. And the remaining four valencies for each carbon I'll write with H. And that will be our answer. C. Answer the following questions in relation to hall herolds process. Name the element which serves both as the anode and cathode in the above process and that is carbon. Identify the electrode at which aluminium is obtained and that will be cathode because aluminium will form the cations. So cathode which is going to be gas, carbon, lining. Name the product formed at anode. At anode, we are going to have oxygen formed. Write the balanced chemical reaction for the same. So it will be 3O2 minus minus 6 electrons 
will give us 3O and 3O plus 3O will give us 3O2. So that's how we'll have oxygen at the anode. Electrolytic mixture is covered with coke or sawdust. Why? To prevent this oxygen formed to react with the carbon or graphite anode. And it will form CO and CO2. So to prevent the heat also from escaping, that is the reason why we have electrolytic mixture covered with coke or sawdust. Let us look at our question number three. Complete the following table which relates to the homologous series of hydrocarbon. General formula CnH2n-2, IUPAC name of this homologous series will be alkynes. Characteristic bond for this will be the triple bond. So it will be triple covalent bond between carbon and carbon. IUPAC name of the first member is going to be with two carbons. So it's going to be ethyne. CnH2n plus 2 is the general formula for alkanes. The characteristic bond type is going to be single covalent bond between carbon and carbon. IUPAC name of the first member will be with one carbon. So that will be methane. B. Study the table below and answer the following questions. So we have group number 1, 2, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we have here lithium and uh, beryllium boron. This will go up to neon. And your this is your AMG. So this will be your sodium. Anyway, now when we answer, we have to take the letters that are given here. We cannot take the actual element, which is the most electronegative element is going to be fluorine. So fluorine is period 2, group 17. So that will be your G. How many valence electrons are present in G? Now G is here. It is group 15. So the valence electrons are going to be 5. Write the formula for the compound between B and H. B is here and H is here. So we are going to write B is going to be group 1A. So it will be 1 plus. H is going to be 16. So it will be 2 minus. And that will give you with crisscross B2H. That's the formula. The compound between F and G. Now F is going to be a metal. Now silicon is a metalloid. But this F is a metal and J is a non-metal. So between the metal and non-metal, it will be ionic bond. Draw electron dot structure for the compound between C and K. Now C is going to be, this is period 2, this is period 3, this is period 4. So C is going to be under group 2A. So your C is going to have electronic configuration 2, 8, 8, 2. And your K is in period 3 and group 17. So it will be 2, 8, 7. So your C is going to be having 2 electrons in the valence shell. Plus we will have K which is... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So one electron will be transferred to 1K. So you will need another K which will again have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 electrons. So this electron will be transferred to K and therefore you will have C with 2 plus ion formed and you will have 2 of K each one will be having one minus valency and that is going to give us C, K, 2. So this is the electron dot structure for the compound between C and K. Let us come to question number 4. The diagram below shows electro refining of copper. Answer the questions 
that follow. So we have this cathode, we have the key, we have the cell, we have the anode and, and cathode and you can see that cathode has this copper 2 plus traveling towards it and anode is having Cu2 plus ions formed at it and they are going into the solution. And this is going to be the anode mud. Alright, suggest a suitable electrolyte for the above process. Now because this is copper being deposited at the cathode, we will have aqueous copper sulfate solution. What will be the cathode made of? Cathode will be made of thin sheet of copper. Cathode will be thin sheet of copper. And write the reaction that takes place at the cathode. At the cathode Cu2 plus is going to migrate. So you are going to have the reaction at cathode will be Cu2 plus plus 2 electrons gives you Cu. Identify X. We already said that it is anode mud. State two spectator ions present in the electrolyte. Now the electrolyte is going to have CuSO4 dissociating into Cu2 plus plus SO4 2 minus. And it will also have water which will dissociate into H1 plus and OH1 minus. So you will have this migrating to the cathode but H, SO4 and OH they are not going to take part in any of the electrolysis reaction. So two spectator ions we will write as OH1 minus and SO4 2 minus. For the exam, write hydroxyl ion and sulfate ion. Question 4b, write balanced chemical equations for the following. Few drops of sodium hydroxide are added to zinc sulfate solution. So you are going to have ZnSO4 plus NaOH and that will give us ZnOH twice plus I'll have to make this 2 over here. So 2Na and SO4 gives you Na2SO4. Ammonia burns in excess of oxygen. So we have 4NH3, you have to know this by heart, plus 3O2 is going to give you 2N2 plus 6H2O. Formation of chloroform from methane. Now methane is CH4 and chloroform is CHCl3. So there are three atoms of chlorine added. So it will be three step reaction. So CH4 plus 3Cl2 which will have UV light, diffuse sunlight or heat will give us CHCl3 plus 3HCl. Preparation of phosphoric acid from its anhydride. Now phosphoric acid, the anhydride is P2O5. And plus water will give us phosphoric acid that is H3PO4. Now this you have to do a little bit of trial and error. So let's check that out. If we have 2 here, we will have 3 here to balance the H. P is balanced 5 and 3 oxygen that is 8 so P2 is balanced O5 and 3 O's that is 8 of oxygen is balanced and 3 H2O and here uh, 6 hydrogen and here 6 hydrogen so it is balanced okay now let us come to question number 5 question number 5 the following questions are related to the laboratory preparation of nitric acid. Write the balanced equation for the above preparation. Now nitric acid is, so for this nitrate HNO3, we will take NaNO3. Plus for this H, we will take H2SO4 conch. And that with less than 200 degrees C, 
will give us the acid salt which is NaHSO4 and plus H and NO3 here so that gives us HNO3. Concentrated HCl is not used in the above process. So why? Because concentrated HCl, this is a volatile acid. And it is not used to displace another volatile acid like your HNO3. HNO3 is again volatile acid. So we need a non-volatile acid to displace a volatile acid. Give reason why nitric acid obtained in the laboratory is slightly yellowish brown. Now slightly yellowish brown because it decomposes 4HNO3 decomposes to give 4NO2 plus 2H2O plus O2 and this NO2 is reddish brown in color. So we will say that the nitrogen dioxide which is liberated on decomposition of HNO3 that is nitric acid dissolves in the solution imparting yellow color. So once again let's see what is the reason HNO3 being photosensitive decomposes to give reddish brown nitrogen dioxide gas which dissolves in it imparting yellowish brown color. What is the method to remove this yellowish brown tinge can be removed. So one method is dilution with water. Dilution with water. Write the balanced equation to show decomposition of concentrated nitric acid on heating. Now concentrated nitric acid on heating, I've already shown it to you over here. So it is 4HNO3 on heating gives 4NO2 up arrow plus 2H2O plus O2 up arrow. 5B. The solution of P has pH 13, Q has pH 6, R has pH 2. So pH 13, P is going to be alkaline because its pH is more than 7. Solution Q has pH 6. So pH 6 is going to be acid. So I'll say acidic. And pH 2 also is going to be acidic. Okay. But the one which is having pH very very less is going to be a strong acid. So strongly acidic. Okay. And this Q is 6. So it's going to be weakly acidic. Now, which solution will liberate ammonia from ammonium sulfate? Now, ammonium sulfate has to react with something with OH. So, it forms ammonium hydroxide. Now, which one of P, Q and R will have OH? OH means alkali. So, it will have to be P because it is alkaline. Which one is a strong acid? Here. Yeah. 2. So that is your R. Which contains molecules as well as ions? The weak acid. So weak acid will have the combination of ions as well as molecules. So it will be Q. List two points of distinction between electrolytic dissociation and ionization. This is a direct question. You can look in the textbook. It is very simple. Let's move on to the next one. Question number 6. Elements P, Q, R belong to the same period. The sulfate of P is PSO4, the nitrate of Q is NO3 thrice and carbonate of R is R2CO3. So your P is going to be, this is 2 plus and this is 2 minus. So P is going to be 2 plus valency. Q is giving you nitrate QNO3. So your Q is going to be 3 plus. Okay. Because NO3 is 1 minus. See this will. This is 1 minus 
this 3 will come from here so it will be 3 plus all right carbonate of r r2 co3 so this 2 has come from here and this co3 is just one of it so this will be 1 plus so your r is valency 1 plus arrange the elements in the increasing order of valencies so let us write over here first p is 2 plus q is 3 plus and r is 1 plus so increasing order will be r then we will have p and then we will have q looking at this arrange the elements in increasing order of atomic radii so let us see your r1 plus is going to be group 1a yeah so this is your group 1a and q is going to be let us say it is 3a so remember the atomic radius decreases across so atomic radius of q is going to be the least so q will be the least and r will be the maximum p will be in the middle so q will be less than p will be less than r arrange the elements in decreasing order of ionization potential now this is across the period we have ionization potential increases okay atomic size decreases ionization potential increases so if you want decreasing then you should go from q up to r so it will be q greater than p greater than r because ip for q is going to be maximum and for r is going to be minimum this way state the group to which q belongs now q is 3 plus so the group to which it belongs is group 3a or 13 this is your 6b determine the formula of organic compound if its molecule contains 12 atoms of carbon and the percentage composition of hydrogen and oxygen are 6.48 and 51.48 respectively so let us see how we solve this so we make the table like this with the element ch and o and the percentages of hydrogen and oxygen have been given for carbon will have to calculate the percentage by subtracting from 100 6.48 plus 51.48 atomic weight 12 is given 1 is given and here 16 is given relative number of atoms will be percentage upon atomic weight so it will be your 42.04 upon 12 I have shown the calculations here it becomes 3.503 so I am taking one place decimal this upon 1 will be 6.48 and 51.48 divided by 16 I have shown here it will be 3.22 so we write here 3.22 simple ratio will be each one of these divided by the least so least is 3.22 so now 3.5 upon 3.22 will be approximately 1 because even if you are dividing actually it will be 1.00 something. So even if you round it off it will still come to 1. So just stick to this 1. Then we come to this 6.48 divided by 3.22. 3.22 double of that is 6.44 so this is very close to that so we'll write it as 2 then 3.22 upon 3.22 that will give us 1 now c is to h is to o the ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 so we write that and we are told that the number of carbon atoms in the compound are 12 so in place of 1 we'll write 12 so in place of 2 it will be double of 12 means 24 and 1 means again 12 so it will have 12 atoms of carbon 24 atoms of hydrogen and 12 atoms of oxygen so your molecular formula will be given by c12 h24o12 and that is our answer question 6c with the help of electron dot structure show the formation of magnesium chloride compound with the help of balanced equation show the reduction process taking place in the formation of magnesium chloride for mg which is 12 atomic number we will write 282 as the electronic configuration 
and for CL we will write 287 as the electronic configuration. So we will show only the valence shell here for Mg because it is electron dot diagram. So Mg with two crosses will represent these two electrons and each one of these CL will have seven electrons. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This one also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this electron will be transferred to Cl. This will be transferred to Cl. So your Mg instead of 282, it will now become 2,8. And your each one of these Cl's instead of 287, they are accepting 1, 1 electron. So each one of them become 288. So you will see that they acquire the stable electronic configuration of the nearest noble gas. So Mg will now have 2 plus charge showing because two electrons are gone. And each one of these Cl's will be 1 minus. So I'm writing 2 Cl 1 minus and that crisscross will give you your Mg Cl 2. Mg is now combining with two Cl ions. The second part asks us to write the reduction process. Now reduction process means gain of electrons. Can you see this gain of electrons? So what is gaining electrons? Obviously chlorine is gaining electron. So we'll write 2 Cl1 minus plus 2 electrons gives us 2 Cl and that is your gain of electron that is your reduction. Let us look at our question number 7. State the property of the compound written in bold in the following reaction. So S plus 6 HNO3 gives us this. Now HNO3 is going to oxidize this. So the property of HNO3 is oxidizing agent. 3Cl2 plus NH3 gives this. Now NH3 is adding H to the Cl. So 3Cl2 is becoming HCl. So it is the reducing property. So it is a reducing agent. Ammonia is the reducing agent. Now NaCl plus H2SO4 conch gives NaHSO4 plus HCl temperature less than 200. For that we are displacing the volatile acid. This is going to be acting as the non-volatile acid. So the property is non-volatile acid property of H2SO4. Arrange the following positive and negative ions in the order in which they will be discharged first in preference to the others. Now discharge first means lower in the activity series will get discharged first. So out of these which one is lowest in the EC series? Now activity series normally we start from top downwards. So we know it by heart from top downwards but they are asking from down upwards. So let us write backwards. So we'll write K first, then CA, then we'll have ZN, then we'll have FE, then we'll have PB, and then we'll have H. Then this is for the anions. Now anions, SO4, NO3, Cl, Bri, OH. So we'll again start backwards, SO4, then NO3, then Cl, Bri, And then OH. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's correct. So this is how they will be discharged. So which ones will be discharged first? OH will be discharged first amongst anions. And amongst cations, H will be discharged first. Choose the correct options. The salt that leaves amphoteric oxide. Now, amphoteric oxide means it will be either ZnAl or Pb. So, it will be this. Salt that decrepitates on heating. Remember the word decrepitates means lead nitrate. So, it is this. The molecule that contains triple covalent bond. Triple covalent bond is nitrogen. It is N triple bond N. Salt which gives curdy white precipitate with sodium hydroxide solution but no precipitate with ammonium hydroxide solution. Now, no precipitate means it is soluble in NH4OH and 
salt that gives curdy ppt with sodium hydroxide means it is insoluble in NaOH. Now, which is the salt which is curdy white and it dissolves in NH4OH? So, because it is giving PPT with sodium hydroxide and no PPT with ammonium hydroxide, it will be calcium chloride because calcium chloride cannot precipitate out CaOH twice in NH4OH. So, it will be calcium chloride. An active electrode will not be platinum nor will it be iron, it will be nickel. Okay, so that finished the entire paper. I hope you have understood how to solve the papers, how to think on different questions, how to present your work and how to think during the examination for the particular question. Yeah, I hope this has given you a good practice for solving chemistry paper for ICSE board. That is your 10th standard board examination. If you want me to make any other videos, you can just put it in the comment box down below. And also tell me if you have any doubts, you can put in the comment box. I will be looking at your comments. So do like, share and comment on this video. Thank you for watching.